welcome back. That is still with us. And of course, we want to shift and talk about something else that we should all know about and be part of. And get this, worldwide, more than 2 billion hectares of once productive land is now degraded according to the UN Convention to Combat Desertification. Now, to help combat this, various innovative methods are being introduced, including the innovative agroforestry and environmental conservation technique by the World Vision. Well, how does it work? Well, let's find out. But before that, take a look at this. So before FMNR, we didn't have any knowledge concerning the importance of trees. There was peak deforestation, whereby there was so much soil erosion. Thereafter, we started practicing FMNR on our lands. FMNR, all it is, is the, the systematic selection and management of some of those shoots coming up. So we'll, we'll reduce the competition, reduce the number of shoots, so that the best ones have a very good chance to grow quickly. After practicing FMNR, we started beekeeping farming. Our lives have changed, the product of our animals have increased, our livelihood have really changed. I like that. And of course, to help us understand what uh, FMNR <laughs> is all about, I am joined by Emily Oko, who is a conservation specialist at the World Vision Kenya. How are you doing this morning, Emily? Thank you so much. I'm doing so well. Karimbo Sanatu. Glad to be studio. here. Yes, I'm glad to have you, you know, to help us understand those things. Exactly. Um, you know, because when we say FMNR, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a mouthful, right? right. Of course, we also have William Odil, who is a chairman, Community Forest Association in Migori County. How are you doing this morning, William? I'm okay. Kari Busana yes. in the studio yes. uh, here in, uh, in Nairobi. And of course, you were saying, hey, Nairobi is a bit chilly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you're comfortable. Well, okay. Comfortable. And of course, we also have Dr. Jane Mutune, who is a scientist, world agroforestry. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Kari Busana to the studio. Okay. Um, you know, when we talk about agroforestry, I think most of us would remember this when we were in school, <laughs> right? So, um, Emily, I think I want to start with you. You know, when we talk about agroforestry, forestry. What exactly does that entail? Okay, when we are talking about agroforestry, these are two words that are intertwined together. Okay. First you have the agro, which means generally crop production, All right. and also the forestry perspective that gives us a perspective towards tree production. Yeah. So this is a kind of a mix or mm -hmm. a kind of a holistic kind of farming mm -hmm. that involves both production of crops or arable farming right. and also production of uh, trees okay. which is forestry i like the fact that you're using production of trees you know most of us just say i tree planting and then we leave it at that um and and, and we had a number of people who were saying listen when you say tree planting that is just it you just plant a tree and then that's it you exactly. you leave it there you don't take care of it you don't water it as, as as you should and then it dies right and and that way you would not have contributed in any given way in terms of um you know environment conservation i like that so then when we talk about the farmer managed natural regeneration Quite a mouthful. Okay, so then what, what exactly is that um, approach? What does it look like? Just to make it very easy for all of us to understand. Exactly. I know yeah. when people, when you talk about farmer managed natural regeneration, I'm even finding you getting it difficult to pronounce right? it all to the end comfortably. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it's such a quite a simple practice. Right. It, it can also be considered as an approach and also as a technique towards, uh, that leads towards uh, landscape restoration or regeneration of lands. Mm -hmm. So just like the name suggests, mm -hmm. farmer managed natural regeneration, mm -hmm. usually acronymed as FMNR yeah. for ease of pronunciation. Yes. Uh, it's a, a, a simple low cost mm -hmm. uh, regeneration mm -hmm. technique right. that is employed to restore farmlands. This is usually done through simple methods, like, just like a selection, mm -hmm. which should be systematic kind of selection, uh -huh. uh, pruning, mm -hmm. management, and even protection of tree stumps. Uh -huh. uh, this can be, it can be tree stumps and it can also be uh, existing or self-sown seeds, mm -hmm. or even trees are already existing in a farm. Uh -huh. So a farmer basically just mm -hmm. selects mm -hmm. which trees are strong enough in a, in a kind of a shrub, mm -hmm. where we have shrub or we have a group of trees that are growing together. Mm -hmm. So you select a few ones which are strong, which are able to survive. Right. Then cull down the ones which are not uh, strong mm -hmm. to give these few ones chance to oh, yeah, yes. grow and also not to compete for nutrients. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically that. 
All right. Exactly. I like that. Um, but Dr. Jane, um, first of all, let's just get to understand what have we been we doing wrong, <laughs> you know, as as a people, um, you know, as far as our approach to agroforestry is concerned. What is it that we've been doing wrong mm -hmm. that has brought us here to where a lot of land, um, you know, or farms uh, have been degraded? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm happy you started by saying that. Uh, uh, our land is degraded. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it means that the land has lost its productivity. Mm -hmm. It has lost its value. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are here. Um, scientists uh, like the World Agroforestry Center and also like those that are in the World Vision have already documented that evidently more than a fifth mm -hmm. of the land globally mm -hmm. is degraded. Wow. That implies that we are threatened in terms of food security. Mm. Our biodiversity mm. equally is threatened. Yeah. Our forests, particularly, particularly the indigenous forests, mm. there are core carbon sinks mm. that actually recharge our water aquifers mm. are threatened. Mm -hmm. So actually we were worried about the future generation, even the current one, even getting a clean glass yes. of water uh, would really be a challenge, mm -hmm. would really be, you know, uh, um, a big uh, um, challenge for us, mm -hmm. for women, for the youth, and even for, for, for the men. Mm -hmm. And what that, that does mean, mm -hmm. that it means even we are more likely to experience mm -hmm. nature-based uh, mm -hmm. induced conflicts mm -hmm. because the wildlife wants the water, yes. uh, the, anim the human beings Once want the water, water. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the all that well. so that's why yeah. this uh, this is a quite a topical issues mm -hmm. and therefore like uh, uh, some of the regreening techniques like agroforestry mm -hmm. come in handy because uh, um, uh, we are able to engage with the farmer mm -hmm. and provide a transformative change mm -hmm. into all these uh, global challenges. I like that. Yeah. And of course, to make it easier for, for people to understand how this is important in terms of the trickle-down effect mm -hmm. of the fact that, number one, we're not taking care of um, you know, the environment, we're not conserving this forest. Yes. Can you paint that picture for us? Uh, for example, me sitting here mm -hmm. or the viewer watching us at home, mm -hmm. maybe they're taking a glass of water or tea mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. Right? Yes. Versus paint that picture for us. It comes exactly. one single mistake that we do that then will have that triple effect um, down to even, for example, like you said, a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a reality that everyone wants to survive. Mm -hmm. There are three pillars in all this survival. Right. Rather, what we may call development. There's the economic bit, mm -hmm. the environment bit, and the social bit. Mm -hmm. So we ought to strike a balance in all this. Mm -hmm. As human beings, mm -hmm. we are more concerned about the profits. Yes. What are we getting? Uh, the economic <laughs> endeavors. Like the food that I'm cultivating as a farmer, uh, the tomatoes that I take to the market, the size of land that I want to cultivate, uh, I want as big as possible. Mm. And therefore, I want even to encroach to the forest. Mm. I want to spray mm. so that these tomatoes, mm -hmm. these crops can mature as fast Faster. as possible without even worrying the pollution we are causing to mm -hmm. the air mm -hmm. and even to the microorganisms. Okay. So the fact that we haven't prioritized the environmental uh, 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 health mm -hmm. Uh, and in, in, in case, in, instead we have prioritized the economic gains, mm -hmm. that makes us uh, having made a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other mistake is, of course, still on the economic. When you see a tree, do I see a carbon sink? Do I see a shade? Mm -hmm. Or do I see charcoal from it? <laughs> so it's all about yes. prioritization yes. and values that we have as a mm -hmm. as human beings, as human beings. Exactly. i like that and of course come back yeah. to you for for more of the same but let me speak to to william so william again aside from being the chairman of the migori um forest association you're also a beneficiary of this project right um tell us how you got introduced into the project and how you were doing things then before being introduced into the project and and what the project has done for you okay before we come into to practice this FMNR, mm -hmm. kule nyuma kulikuwa na shida mingi ya encroachment katika our community forest and uh, mm -hmm. Kenya forest. Yeah. So as the community, we came in mm -hmm. 
so that we protect our community forest okay. and the Kenya forest. Okay. So that is why we came and formed this organization called Community Forest Association. Mm -hmm. And it's a registered uh, organization All right. with the uh, Register of Society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So as from there, we start sensitization from the community mm -hmm. so that they know how they can protect their community the forest, forest. Yeah. and the Kenya forest. Okay. Because there were a lot of encroachment to our forests. Mm. And you know where we are coming from in Migori, especially the area I'm coming from in Nyateke sub-country, mm. the artisanal mining is taking place yes. in a serious note. Yes. So there was a lot of interest of cutting the trees mm. so that they use them in there are pit, pit, pit holes, mm. uh, and uh, you know it, it brings a lot of people from different parts of Migori and uh, mm. out of Migori, yeah. from even our neighbor counties in Tanzania and Uganda. Mm. So people have a lot of interest of using firewood mm. and charcoal. Yes. So as the community, we see mm. uh, there is something coming very dangerously to our forest. Absolutely. And that is why we, we now came in as a community to protect, protect the forest. The forest and, and I like the that, um, you know, the fact that um, you took that initiative yes. as, as a community to say, listen, Lazima to protect our forest, yes. right? So how did, did the fact that Total Kwan encroached into the forest, mm. how did that affect the community around? For example, women, children, and even, and even the men. Ilu uh, affect it will affect kwa sababu mm -hmm. when, 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 when the people encroach the forest and cutting the trees, mm -hmm. you know, even food we cannot get. Because even the rainfall, we cannot get even the rainfall. And land degradation mm -hmm. is coming mm -hmm. uh, in a high note. Mm -hmm. So that is why we see sense as mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. How we are going, how, how will our future be yes. if this forest is going to be cut it down all. Mm. So that is why we have decided as a community to come together and okay. synthesize the people mm. so that they know uh, the benefit mm. from, from, our, from our forest. Mm. Uh, and that is why we came in mm. and uh, we start making some barazas mm. to our people so that they know why we are we want to protect, protect the, the, uh, forest. Uh, the forest. I like that. Mm. I'll come back to you in terms of some Fanyanini exactly and, and what, what this approach that is the FMNR um, approach you may contribute Ajay, towards again environment uh, video conservation and also the benefits that maybe Nini may encounter as, yeah. as, as the community over there. But let me speak to um, Emily in just a moment. I like the fact that William says, you said, we took that initiative, you know, to protect our forest because we live there, we understand, you know, the benefits that, that this forest has for us. But then again, there's so many people who will be like, I see, like, you see, that is left to the, <laughs> to agroforestry, for example, world vision. See, then, then they can do it, right? For that person who's watching <coughs> us and thinking, uh, but I do not live uko mashambani minashi town, <laughs> right? How then do I contribute, uh, you know, to this in terms of just making sure that, um, you know, we, we really manage our environment very well? Okay, in the communities where FMNR has been practiced or has been implemented, mm -hmm. it has not been a sole uh, responsibility of the uh, development institution yeah. that is involved in this, that is rallying out support from the communities to do the work. But mm -hmm. it is something that, because for it to be sustainable, mm -hmm. the aspect of uh, uh, securing a kind of uh, uh, a community mm -hmm. that is receptive, that is honoring the whole process, owning the whole process, mm -hmm. and also that is uh, committed to the whole process was very key. Okay. And this also involves not only communities within the localities where FMNR is being practiced. Mm. It also comes uh, to us who are also in the development um, uh, yes. or yeah. stratas. Mm. The government is involved and even other development partners also are involved in this mm. because at the end of the day, uh, when the environment is destroyed, mm. who suffers? It is All us and us. majorly children. Mm. Because as we live today, and probably we may not really feel the pain of it. Yeah. But there are these children that are now growing up. 
how is their future secured? Mm -hmm. So if we fail to secure the interest of the environment today, mm -hmm. then it means that our children's well, future suffer. is uh, completely destroyed. It's not mm -hmm. secured at all. Mm -hmm. And that is why it was very important to ensure that this process is sustainable mm -hmm. so that it does not just depend on development partners. Okay. The community had, uh, has to come on board on the process and be committed to it. Okay. And that's what uh, uh, William is talking about, where mm -hmm. community has risen up because they've also realized that there's something that is not going on well. Absolutely. And the future needs to be mm -hmm. secure. So through sensitization, mm -hmm. through advocacy, mm -hmm. and through awareness creation, okay. we are able to touch on every uh, social strata to bring mm -hmm. them on board and include every person, including women, mm -hmm children, these other marginalized groups within yeah. the society. Absolutely. So it is not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. This involves all of us as a community mm -hmm. and as a nation and together even world over. Absolutely. Exactly. Course, we've had a lot of indigenous communities being again displaced, especially from the forest and yet they are the ones who are very, very key in terms of protecting this forest. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But for now, for let's say someone is just tuning right now and thinking, okay, uh, FMNR, right? So, for example, I have piece of land, right? And uh, let's say I have planted what? For example, maize, which I think is one of the common things that, that people people plant. Or again, whatever it is that the person has on the, on the land. And like you said, it's not just about crop production, but we also have the aspect of, um, you know, indigenous forests as well, I mean, indigenous trees to be specific. So for this person who's thinking, so then how do I, how do I then participate in the FMNR project using my land, right? I suppose I've never heard about this approach before. Just break it down for us so that people really understand what the project is all about. Thank you so much because, uh, because uh, FMNR can be practiced in varied contexts. Yes. It is not just for that only one farmer in the village. Yes. It's up to all of us to ensure that the environment is conserved. Even mm -hmm. that farmer who has a piece of land, but they're doing crop production. Mm -hmm. There's this bit of agroforest that we've talked about, and yes. there are those trees that are agroforestry friendly, mm -hmm. that can also support production of crops. Mm -hmm. And also, when we look at the ambition of the government to have 10% uh, forest, forest coverage, yeah. so that is one of the things that we want to employ. Mm -hmm. By a farmer just uh, even doing hedge planting of trees along the mm -hmm along the fences, okay. or just leaving trees that are already within the plot. Ah, okay. They don't have don't to cut, cut them, them down, down when they are doing their crop production. Okay. These trees, there's a, a kind of relationship that they can have with the crop, and even at the end of the day, enhance the productivity of this, uh, of this crop. Yeah. So the, uh, farmers are advised, or even every other person, all land users are mm -hmm. advised, that whenever you want to have pro uh, probably uh, crop farming, please consider not cutting all the trees from the field. Okay. You can leave a few, and these ones can be managed in a way that through FM, through farm management regeneration, mm -hmm. they can be managed in a way that they don't compete with the crops. With the crops, yes. And uh, with selection of trees that are friendly to crops mm -hmm. production, mm -hmm. then this can still uh, end up bringing even uh, more impact or even more, more income out at the end of the day. Absolutely. So it only involves uh, selecting some few trees within the, the farm, just mm -hmm. like already alluded. Mm -hmm. uh, prune them so that their leaves uh, or branches don't go too far to cause shedding on the farm. Mm -hmm. Use those leaves, and then those leaves, all those branches can be used for oh, other yes. uses within the homestead. The, the homestead, yes. And that's the beauty of farmer managed natural regeneration. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this tree wasted. should be managed over time, protected over time mm -hmm. with the pruning, and uh, just protection of that tree. At okay. the end of the day, the farmer should be able to even get a bumper harvest. Yes, yes. from the same. I like that. Now, there was a time we were talking I think, about forest conservation and how important that is. And we had a lot of farmers calling in and saying, so fine, we understand <laughs> that we're supposed to protect the environment. We're supposed to uh, you know, protect the trees in terms of not just plant, but also make sure that we take care of the trees and, and, and that's all good. But then again, so then how do we know what works best? Um, in certain areas, right? And, and, and the way that you're saying, you know, it can go hand in hand. The trees can also help in terms of, you know, ensuring that the crops um, thrive, right? So the question is then, what goes well with what? Because a lot of them said, listen, we had to cut down a mm -hmm. number of trees. Um, you know, blue gum was one of the culprits. They said we <laughs> cut all them down uh, because they were not, they were not helping. So then uh, what would you say, uh, Dr. Mutuna, in terms of understanding what works and what yeah. doesn't? There are, there are two approaches that we can use yeah. uh, definitely to know what works best. Okay. 
One is science-based evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya, we are privileged to have research institutions mm -hmm. uh, that really uh, work hand-in-hand hand with the farmers mm -hmm. to know what really works best and where. We have the World Agroforestry Center. It has done a lot of research mm -hmm. on what trees are situated for on-farm uh, tree growing mm -hmm. uh, and in what ecological zone. We also have uh, other research institutions like the Kenya uh, Forest Research Institution. They are, uh, can be able to advise the farmers what trees are better placed for where. Okay. But importantly, uh, the other approach is the farmer himself, yeah, right. the farmers in a particular locality and the local actors. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't forget them. Mm -hmm. They are quite knowledgeable. They know what has been doing That's best true. here. Uh, they will tell right? us that uh, Grivaria yeah. is better placed and we find even more uh, profitability. Mm -hmm. It is uh, more accepted here mm -hmm. more than the other. So the farmer has a lot of knowledge on what has been doing best, what has been failing, mm -hmm. and really what can be locally accepted. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing for us to get environmental um, uh, status right is the acceptability mm -hmm. by the farm holder, mm -hmm. the one who owns the farm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that is the only sustainable way we can be able to be sure that the investments mm -hmm. that we are making into improving the natural capital, mm -hmm. like the land, the soil, through tree growing, is that the farmer is in, and therefore even the farmer managed the uh, uh, natural regeneration. Mm -hmm. If the farmer is not in yet, is the holder of the farm, including the communal land, because they are the custodians mm -hmm. of that uh, uh, type uh, kinds of land, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the success would be yeah. minimal. But mm -hmm. if they are in, yes, uh, sustainability is assured. It is assured. Yes. And like the fact that you're saying acceptability is, is, is key, right? Because you might offer all the training, but if the farmer does not accept it, then exactly. it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. So, William, um, understanding the impact that, um, you know, first of all, encroachment had uh, in your community forest. Mm -hmm. um, so then what, uh, and again, you took the FMNR, uh, but then again, what exactly did you do? You together with your group, Nini exactly in Bifanya, um, to help conserve the forest? Yes, Asante. Mm. We have to as the community. First, in uh, your advocacy, to mm. make tosha, mm. so that community will adopt mm. uh, this new technology called FMNR. Okay. Uh, because it's very easy to adopt. Na ni osababu to meusisha vijana na wamama. Because most of our women are the ones using firewood. Mm -hmm. And so when this new, new technology came in, mm -hmm. they can just prune the leaves of the tree and the mother tree is remaining there. Mm -hmm. So zile conflicts ambayo zilikuwa zinafanywa kule mbeleni na watoto wetu wakaenda kutafuta kuni, kwenye misitu. That is where they met these young teenagers and uh, it was bringing a lot of pregnancy mm -hmm. to our daughters yeah. because they go very far looking for the for the firewood, firewood. Yeah. so by 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 now when the, this new technology came in kila mtu anafanya kwa shamba yake so you cannot move very far from your home okay. because unaifanya tu Mm. Uh, in, in, in your land. Okay. Yeah. So you exactly Nafanya you've talked about pruning. Mm. Um but even aside from pruning, so fine, so kilam talk on a shambayake, right? Mm -hmm. Because again forest you know, like different types yeah, of exactly. indigenous mm. um trees which is good for the environment, right? Mm. But in your farm, Koshambayako where mm. for example as William, yes. right? Mm. What is it that you have? Koshambayako and Nini exactly unafanya aside from pruning, aside from you know all those things that we've talked uh, about. Nalima, exactly? nalima, nalima katikati ya hizo miti because I've already pruned them. Mm -hmm. They are friendly, environment friendly. Yeah. Zile matawi zinatoka kwenye hizo miti. Mm -hmm. Inaleta mbolea kwenye nice. shamba and land degradation sasa ifanyiki mm -hmm. because ule nyuma watu walikuwa na fiaka shamba yake akiona kifiaka yes. shamba inakuwa mzuri but ajui kwamba when the rain comes mm -hmm. It at uh, the this top soil, it end na maji yote That's because true. there is no any tree uh, katikati ya shamba yeah, yako. So when soil. the rain comes, mm -hmm. inangoa the top soil. Alafu the hard soil dio inabaki ambayo ina rutuba. Aina, yes. So when we, we start practicing this, so people know now 
when when you are preparing your land yeah. for 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 cultivation, yeah. you leave some trees there. Yes. You see, yes. to protect your land so that it cannot be removed by water. That's true. Yeah. That's so good. that is what what I'm also doing in my mm -hmm. own farm. I like that. Yeah. And okay. it's doing well with the uh, it's friendly with the with, with, the, the, with, the, with the crops. Okay. So yes. do you want us to, to tell us exactly me aina gani ya crops mwe panda na na miti gani uko nayo in your farm? Yeah, yeah. We we know we 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 mostly like this indigenous trees. Mm -hmm. uh, Acacia polycantha. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very friendly and I'm also putting maize there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and some fruits, mangoes, yeah. uh, moringas, okay. uh, in the farm, the same farm. It's now yeah. agroforestry farm. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Different species here, there. Of trees mm. um, together with the crops and yeah. all those things. Yeah. And okay. they are doing well. Right. Mm. Okay. So then, Emily, uh, for someone who, for example, hmm, so no training has been done, right? Um, and, and let's say someone has a parcel of land and probably they're doing what what William is doing and that is have like indigenous trees in the in the farm but also want to plant like other crops what are the signs that this all those things are coexisting mm. or they are not how, how do I know now that you mentioned the uh, indigenous trees yes that is of great interest okay because FMNR and indigenous trees they go hand in hand, hand, in hand yes uh, previously, I already said that FMNR takes advantage of tree stumps yes. that are re sprouting, mm. and also the self-sown seeds, because it's a general knowledge that if you enclose a particular place mm. and uh, protect it from probably human uh, interferences and even uh, animal interferences, mm. give it time, then what you'll get from that uh, uh, space protected mm. is a lot of trees and vegetation just coming up from That's nowhere, true. yet you didn't sow a single seed. Yeah. What does that one tell us? That mm. underground there's a forest. Mm. And that is one of the principles of FMNR. Yeah. And these uh, trees that emerge, they are usually indigenous to that agroecological zone. These are trees that can grow mm. independent without considering how the weather changes because they are indigenous to that mm. agroecological zone. Yeah. Let's consider, maybe probably, let me move you out from a kind of farmland. Yeah. Let's go to the Asa, the uh, arid yeah, and semi-arid yeah, semi lands, lands, where there's uh, expansive landscapes. Mm -hmm. Those are places that FMNR will thrive because in such areas you find that the agroecological zone or the, the climate itself doesn't uh, mm -hmm. favor planting of exotic trees like yes. the, 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 what? Graf gra gravelia yes, 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 and, yes, yes. Uh, and the eucalyptus. Yeah. So in those areas, if uh, trees that are indigenous to those areas mm. that come up from self-sown seeds or stumps that were previously cut and now they are sprouting, mm. those trees have got a high uh, chances of surviving, surviving that's true. even without so much care given to them. But if you plant a tree, yes, it's easy to plant, mm. but are you able to grow them? Yeah. Because the weather may be, so the shocks of the mm. weather may affect this uh, yeah. plant and it may not grow far. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the contexts under which FMNR works so well. Mm -hmm. Just like he said, you were asking if, uh, what are the indicators that shows that yeah. this is something that can work with the crops. Yeah. Usually indigenous trees, mm -hmm. they will easily coexist mm -hmm. with the crop because they're indigenous to that piece of land, yeah. to, that, to that agroecological zone. Mm -hmm. So in most cases you'll find that uh, it is the exotic trees that usually have a kind of so antagonism with issue, uh, yeah. competing for nutrients, competing for water with the uh, with the crops but with the indigenous trees mm -hmm. as long as the farmer just uh, uh, works together with experts to know how many number of trees do i want, do, do i need, need to live in this kind of piece of land yeah. depending on the crops that you mm -hmm. want to produce like so they work so well together. without antagonism yes. okay. especially when you refer to indigenous trees yes, indigenous trees they're, yeah. they're like the easiest exactly. <laughs> you know to manage they coexist and all those things okay but then there's, there's also an aspect of animals because again i want to believe if someone has like a farm they would want to have you know rare animals but also plant trees but also you know um do their crops as well so then how do you ensure that all this coexist but of course we're taking a short break we'll come back um you know with answers for that but if you are a farmer watching us and thinking okay this is this is interesting i hope you're learning a lot but if you still have more questions, feel free to use the numbers down on your screen. Give us a call. We have a panel of experts who will help us understand more on the same and how we can all um, you know, participate in terms of FMNR. It's concerned. So see you after the short break.
the last two years, Centum Real Estate has completed and handed over 600 plus homes in Nairobi and Pipingo. Riverbank at Two Rivers, comprising one, two, and three bedrooms plus DSQ apartments, is among the move in ready homes available for sale from 15 million Kenya shillings and rent from 120,000 Kenya shillings per month. The apartments present the epitome of live, play, shop, and work, luxury living within the same complex. The Riverbank apartments assure you state of the art security in a lush landscape with exquisite views. Call plus 254-713-877-777 for details. Join Amica today and enjoy attractive returns on your investments, affordable loans, convenient banking, and tailor-made financial solutions. Amica Savings and Credit. Plan smarter, live better. People out here who are suffering with the allergies, and of course most of them do not know what exactly they are allergic to. Any adverse reaction to food is recognized as that it might be caused by an allergy. For my firstborn, she'd throw up, she'd get a running stomach for days, you know, like even seven days until it all cleared. Yeah. It wasn't really easy to pick, yeah. uh, because first of all, you, you eat so many things. We understand in life, the things that you desire the most are within reach when we unlock possibilities. UAP Old Mutual is now Old Mutual. It's the headquarters of good vibes. So I should just kneel and begin to call on Jesus because I'm a vision. You know, Dr. Kingori, yes. you, you, you sound like a street fighter. Where, where did you grab it? Unataka noma. Kingori, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to be fast and I'm going to be soon. You know, they always say smart women, where to catch them is with love. Kingori, I love how your suit looks. I love you in a suit, I love you in a t-shirt. As in any example, am I you actually mean that? Maifungu waki, akili ya mse, ama kichu ya mse, ukapata vile watu kusema, huu jamaa na akili. Tunaweza tuwa nyama kwa, uko nyuma tuweke kwa matuzi. Kifuwa. Nesi mdu wala kwa naraochafu, sana. Hahaha. Na ukidive na esabiwa? Yes, indi uki win. Ukidive win si ume ume win. Eee, ume eza, iyo ndio tizi unapa upinge. Na piga nga tu tizi ya 90 meters ya kwaza. Lafu ni kifika 90 meters. Na try. Every Friday on NTV, 7.30 p.m. Kante, sichui watu wa Nairobi wanafikiri yanga na kiyungo kani. Yani ni makucha na Nairobi kufanya kazi ya security. Yeah, siku yangu ya kwanza nikaota mtosi wangu umetachirika. Nikamwambia mtoto yangu akanifuta kazi. <laughs> Common sense. Common sense. To get Watchman, dial star 812 star 804 hash. Skiza na Nation. Made with 100% pure peanuts and a rich source of omega-6, helping you grow healthy and happy kids. Buy and enjoy Blue Band peanut butter at reduced prices today. Made possible through local farming in Kenya.
All right, welcome back. Glad to see with us. Of course, 31 minutes past the hour. Of course, we have a lot to cover as far as the innovative agroforestry and environmental conservation technique is concerned. So, like I said, if you are a farmer watching us and thinking, okay, this is a very interesting subject that, of course, I need to be a part of, then, uh, but you still have a lot of questions. I hope, first of all, that you're learning, but if you still have more questions, feel free to interact with us. The numbers are down on your screen. And uh, let's learn at the end of the day how how um, you know important number one this is and what we can all do to be part of this but at the end of the day to conserve our environment so dr mutune very quickly i mean again over the break of course the discussion continues and of course we're talking about how sometimes it's very interesting for farmers to just say listen this thing is occupying a large <laughs> you know part of my farm and, and i just don't know what to do with the same so most of most of them will end up cutting it down completely what do you do Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, for the farmer, I'm sure one thing they are concerned about mm -hmm. is about not only profit, mm -hmm. but also the health of their soils. Mm -hmm. uh, because if their soils are not healthy, mm -hmm. uh, they'll keep on returning to the market mm -hmm. for fertilizers, yes. the chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do that mm -hmm. even without testing the soil. Mm. So they don't know whether their soils are acidic or mm. they are alkaline. Yeah. So in the process they alter, even they affect mm. uh, their yields, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of uh, crop production they get from their farm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are uh, here talking about uh, the trees, mm -hmm. the agroforestry techniques, mm -hmm. and even the farmer managed natural regeneration. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily has already articulated that for the farmer-managed uh, natural, farmer natural regeneration, mm -hmm. mostly we rely on the, uh, for their forest underground, mm -hmm. the trees underground, mm -hmm. like the uh, rootstocks mm -hmm. uh, will, will, will sprout mm -hmm. and come back. Mm -hmm. And most of the times those are indigenous trees. Mm -hmm. uh, we know farmers are worried that they may spread too much in the farm and therefore occupy most of the uh, the farmland mm -hmm. and therefore maybe shed their crop uh, maybe there'll be crawlination and all that on and all that no uh, mm -hmm. enough light for their mm -hmm. crops mm -hmm. but what we are saying as a technique is that there's an advantage of pruning mm -hmm. of pruning these trees mm -hmm. so that the crops and the trees can coexist mm -hmm. and the same time we can have healthy soils mm -hmm. we can have bumper harvest and the same time we have us also have a uh, carbon things uh, in that way we are talking about mitigating the effects of climate change mm -hmm. uh, and also when we turn to the other um, agricultural techniques like mm -hmm. agroforestry when we have uh, mm -hmm. the farmer who has integrated uh, these trees on farm mm -hmm. and they find that they are also like occupying a, a much space on the land mm -hmm. the solution is not to cut them mm -hmm. the solution is to uh, leave them alone okay. uh, because they ensure um, a, 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 a healthy a healthy farm mm -hmm. Uh, for food security, for mm -hmm. soil erosion controlled, and even shade mm -hmm. uh, in advance uh, weather co conditions. Oh, yes. eh? And that microclimate also mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. We prone the branches, mm -hmm. prone the branches, mm -hmm. and they will start sprouting uh, uh, naturally. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, we have to coexist True. with the trees mm -hmm. because we only have one earth mm -hmm. and we have no plan b yeah. so as much as possible we have to make profits mm -hmm. have a healthy planet mm -hmm. and also at the same time a mm -hmm. uh, money in the pocket absolutely i like that covers all the areas ecological and economical yes yeah, sustainable um, well, development which is, which is which is very interesting yes. okay how do we prune this is there like a wrong way <laughs> to prune trees is there like a right way to prune this emily all right. Oh, oh, you want to, William? Okay, William, just tell us because now you you're telling us from experience, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Is there like a wrong way or a right way to? Prune? A right way, not yeah. a wrong way. Yes. We must prune it in a right way. Okay. Uh, without not making any injury mm -hmm. to the tree. Mm -hmm. So we have practiced well, yeah. and we know how to be prune. Okay. So how do you do it yourself? How, yes. You first of all, you must have a sharpened panga. Mm -hmm. Vizuri sana. Okay. So, and uh, in a way, okay. so you prune from down oh, prune up. to up okay. without injuring any mother tree. Okay. You just remove the only the branch. Ah, okay. Yes. Why this? What if you do this? 
No, <laughs> if, you, if, if you go this way, yes. it will have an injury. Uh, it will the affect the, the, the mother tree. Okay. So when you go upstairs, uh -huh. you only remove the branch. Okay. Yes. And then do you do it like really, really close? Like for example, okay, this, this is the tree. Yes, <laughs> And yes. this is the branch that yes. you want to, yes. to prune. So yeah. do you do it like very close to the mother tree? No, no, or no, no, is no. there like a distance no, no, that you no. need you, to? You leave some observe. inches. You okay. leave some inches. Mm -hmm. Don't interfere with the mother tree. You just leave some inches okay. to the branch. Okay. So you, if 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 this is the branch, mm. you 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 ah. sharpen it from here. Okay. okay so okay. you don't touch yes. the mother tree. I like that. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, and then how far up do you go? Because <laughs> I have seen people who go all the way up until they just leave like no, a no, 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 no. Tiny... There, there is a stage. Yeah. Where you must reach. You okay. cannot go up to all where the, the, the yeah. Okay. So there is a stage, uh -huh. uh, not 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 to the end of the tree. You okay. just uh, you just see the the, 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 the between the, those those branches which are matured. Okay. You just remove the the, the matured branches. Mm -hmm. So when you reach to the branches which are not matured, mm -hmm. you leave. You leave them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. But some might say, but yeah, the ones that are not matured are like all the way up there. It's like a specific distance, or just use your eye. You know, just eye yeah, one you and just, see. Yeah. Yeah. No, ata kama mtoto bado hajakoma unajua tu hii mtoto yangu hajakoma koma lakini ile imekoma ndio utatoa okay uh, yes all right i like that yeah just prune and then you know prune up yeah, not, not, not the other yeah. way not mm. the other way um round okay then so in terms of then understanding yes it is important to to practice fm and r um, but emily again so how then does this help in terms of especially building resilience in uh, in communities Okay, it is true that even uh, world over and even within our country, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of uh, land degradation that has been experienced. This has been because of um, mm -hmm. climate change being the biggest culprit. We have drought, we have floods happening. Mm -hmm. We have even um, in unsustainable land use practices that people employ, mm -hmm. and these ones end up uh, uh, destroying the, 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 the ecosystem mm -hmm. or even the, the landscapes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, this leads to uh, the suffering of children majorly mm -hmm. and women, and women. Mm -hmm. because these are the people who usually depend so much on these uh, land resources for their food supply okay. for their health mm -hmm. and also for their income mm -hmm. so you find that the kind of uh, situation where we are in right now is like we are in an emergency yeah. kind of state mm -hmm. and if this is not help then the future for the children it's so just bleak. not good. Yeah. We can't even allude to it. Mm. So through uh, farmer managed natural regeneration, farmers are now transforming their lives. Mm. They are changing their landscapes. And they are able to take control of their livelihoods mm. through planting trees. Mm. And through that coexistence, you find that livelihoods have been restored. Mm. They are able to even uh, harvest the, the forest, the tree products, and even sustainably. We don't say that there's no harvesting of these tree products at all. Mm -hmm. There's a sustainable way of harvesting them. Okay. There's a sustainable way of even making charcoals and getting money mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. So through sensitization and empowerment through capacity building, mm -hmm. you find that the communities have learned mm -hmm. and now they're able to coexist in a positive way with the nature. Mm -hmm. So through this, libraries have been restored. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, William has already said also as well, mm -hmm. women, are no longer going, women and children are no longer going yeah, too, too far, far to fetch for firewood. For and yeah. that time that has, was being lost previously can now be utilized doing to do else. something uh, constructive for the family, mm -hmm. especially economic development of the family. Mm -hmm. So this way, you find that uh, the communities are becoming resilient to the climate. In as much as climate change is living with us, yes. but they're still able to support their, their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. They're able to support their children. Mm -hmm. The children are able to go to school because of the income that they get from um, mm -hmm. this livelihoods that they're doing. Okay. So FMNR has contributed widely. Mm, in terms of, 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 of um, just building resilience. And also I wanted to say that, yeah, is. even mm -hmm. some areas, water towers have been restored. Yes. Because people are no longer cutting down the, down the trees. Mm -hmm. They're embracing indigenous trees that are there. They're only pruning them. Mm -hmm. So you find that water towers have been restored. Yeah. Some rivers that had dried. Mm -hmm. I know where William comes from, there are rivers that had dried, but now they've been resuscitated. Yeah. So that way, they're able to get their water close, they're mm -hmm. able to do their crop production and even do irrigation. Mm -hmm. So life is coming back 
which is good That's thing. strengthening resilience. Yes, exactly. Which is a good thing. I like that. Okay. Now, what about those people who plant indigenous trees? First of all, I'll, I'll ask you, Dr. Dr. Mutuni, in terms mm. of then where do people get this? It's just in case someone wants to shift from exotic, which, mm. like you said, exotic mm -hmm. um, is sort of costlier and not yeah. like in the immediate in terms of acquiring it, but also when you look at the long-term effects of the same, mm. it's a bit costlier to the farmers compared to planting indigenous trees, right? So where do people then get the seeds for indigenous trees? Mm -hmm. But Emily, uh, sticking with you for a moment, um, there's some people who plant indigenous trees for, I would say, income purposes, business purposes. Um, because again, there's this thing that so it, <laughs> it will fetch good money, which at the end of the day is, is, is sort of like a business, um, you know, to, to, to these people. Where do you start when it comes to that? As it come back to sustainable use of trees. Okay, okay. That one cuts across and that one helps us even to live with the trees mm. in as much as we are doing business with them. All right. Like those who have the indigenous trees that they feel this one can fetch more money when they, when they get the wood. Mm. There's also a better way of doing it. Right. There are people who have also done, uh, you cut up to three quarter. That mm. is uh, like, a, they leave it to copies. Okay. It's not like a stump that was cut from down. Yeah. This tree will still copies very fast That's when true. the rains come on That's board. True. So that way they are able to get those big hoods that they want mm -hmm. and sell. But at the same time, still leave the tree standing and uh, mm -hmm. will be able to help them even in future again. Yeah. And also, uh, we also encourage them that whenever they have, it really has to be cut down. Mm -hmm. Then let others also, the ones that are sprouting, let them be supported to grow. Oh, yes. So that to act as a replacement. Okay. But so in most cases, we'll, we'll ask them to just prune them because there's some big branches that can act as wood. Oh, that's true. That's and true. also they can cut the wood that is uh, about um, two thirds, I think two thirds, yes. going upwards. Of the ground up. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you don't have to necessarily uproot yes. the, whole, the whole thing because once you cut it that way, then of course chances are, chances of others, um, you know, sprouting is... is exactly, is, okay. exactly. It will. All right. So it's, it's like a continuous process by the time you're getting to it like oh come we should have but this other one has exactly. already started um, sprouting i like the fact that you're saying sustainable is the way to go and not completely saying absolutely positively mm -hmm. no don't do it mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day people would say but this is my line i need to make um, you know money i have a family to feed i have all these exactly. things that i don't have anything else to do but do it sustainably which is which is a good thing all right so dr mutune then where do we get the seeds from the indigenous ones yes for the for the indigenous seeds eh? Uh, or rather even seedlings mm -hmm. and what uh, we all acknowledge one is that the indigenous trees of course uh, uh, have a multiplicity of functions yes. eh? um, uh, we cannot substitute them sure. uh, for anything else mm -hmm. eh? um, but they take long to mature mm -hmm. so the farmer might not be patient enough to reap probably the mm -hmm. economic environmental benefits associated with the tree mm -hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have seedlings and seeds that are available yeah. right at the community. Like now we have the community forest associations with the enactment of the Forest Act 2016, which was uh, revised recently. Mm -hmm. We have a participatory forest management, mm -hmm. which allows for establishment of community forest association mm -hmm. and they are in uh, user groups. Mm -hmm. One of the user groups is a seed collection mm -hmm. user group. And uh, farmers, I, I mean, uh, uh, community members are there, mostly farmers, mm -hmm. and mostly women that mm -hmm. collect these seeds mm -hmm. from the forest. Mm -hmm. the, the, the prunus africana, the olea, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, species and all that. Mm -hmm. And actually they produce them. So the farmer to reduce on the transaction cost that maybe they have to commute from one place to the other, they can actually get them from their local the uh, CFAs. Yeah. Uh, and because they grow those seeds. Mm -hmm. And also the community members, as I said before, they know best which trees thrive That's well true. in their ecological That's zone. Yeah. Another place to get these indigenous trees is of course uh, uh, a like government institution, the Kenya Forest Research Institute. Mm -hmm. We also have a international research organization like the ECRAF, mm -hmm. and where the farmer feels that now 
uh, because when we talk about FMNR, the farmer managed natural regeneration, mm -hmm. we don't mean you go cutting trees no. so that they sprout again, they <laughs> regenerate. No. no, we don't mean that. Yeah. We mean a sustainable management of it. Mm -hmm. But in the event that because the FMNR will work best where now the tree will sprout without having to plant, without to grow. But in the extent that the land is too degraded, mm -hmm. such that they cannot regenerate mm -hmm. Uh, on their own, we encourage tree growing. Okay. And that is where now agroforestry comes in. Mm -hmm. We are able now to uh, restore mm -hmm. that land mm -hmm. with agroforestry uh, 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 trees. Mm -hmm. And the seedlings are readily available at the World Agroforestry Center, mm -hmm. including uh, uh, other uh, organizations okay. that may be concerned with the All same. Right. Various yeah. options that people yeah, can actually options, get the, either the seeds or seedlings. But also Emily mentioned the fact that they are self-sowing, right? Kisha mature, the seeds, zinanguka, they grow, life moves on. So mm -hmm. again, depends, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so William, aside from, again, and this is in terms of the benefits, aside from, again, helping these young girls and women, keeping them safe, uh, reducing the time that they spend going all the way to fetch mm, for firewood, mm, right? And then mm. just having this, um, you know, within the locality. Mm. When it comes to then the environment, what are some of the benefits that Nini as a community you have you have witnessed through the, the approach and that is FMNR? Mm, uh, benefits ni miengi. Ambayo tumepata kutokana na FMNR. Kwanza, nilisema hapo mbeleni. Uh, the benefit ni kwanza kwa hiyo miti yenyewe ambayo umetunza ambayo umefanyia FMNR mm -hmm. when you are removing these branches you get firewood and you sell this firewood mm -hmm. and I've said before uh, the area where I'm coming from mm -hmm. is where the antisonal mining is activities mm -hmm. uh, inafanyika kwa njia kubwa sana mm -hmm. so and people depend on on firewood and charcoal so when our people now practice FMNR, this is where they now get benefit by removing these branches and then they sell mm -hmm. uh, as the firewoods. Mm -hmm. So those are ones of the benefits we are also getting. Mm -hmm. uh, the benefit also is when our lands were degraded, mm -hmm. now when we come to with this new technology, mm -hmm. so the land is now protected it's because, fertile. yeah. Yes. You see, mm -hmm. so this is all erosion. It may quite reduced. Okay. Yeah. Unasema, for example, for you, unapanda mahindi, right? Yes. Um. So compared then, where Com the environment was was degraded, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Um. In terms of harvest, yes. okay. Compare then na, na sasa. Eh, but on like yeah, difference yeah, yeah, in terms of kupona bona kisugani. It's quite different because uh -huh. now we are harvesting more okay. than before. Before we could have done a cigar. Yeah, we could have landed. You see, mm -hmm. and we could have tambarare, we mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. So when we came with this new technology by protecting and pruning these our trees, mm -hmm. no, now we get a lot of uh, mm -hmm. harvesting. Yeah. And the rain is now coming twice a year. Oh, good. So those are also the, some of the benefit yeah. as the community we yeah. are now seeing mm -hmm. because kule nyuma kukuwa na mvua. Land mm. ilikuwa imearibika yote, mm. eh? miti maji. haikuweko, maji haikuweko. Mm. And now you can see we have some streams ambao sasa maji mirudi. Mm. Even these are wild animals now can get water. That's true. Oh, wakati ukule mbele walitoroka mm -hmm. because hiyo ilikuwa, all, all the bush ilikuwa sharp. Mm -hmm. So unajua, for example, asa hai na wezi kwa mali ya... That's true, uh, it's, 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 it's not bushy. <laughs> yes. uh, it disappears. Okay. So by this time around, they have come back. Mm -hmm. Even the antelopes, yeah. they have come back. Okay. Because they are getting water near to where they are. I like that. So, mm -hmm. so you and me, now on a peer, upande to come, human beings and uh, wanyama, peer, mm -hmm. they are also benefit. That's true. Yeah, because yeah. they get water there, mm -hmm. and they also get the grass there. Mm -hmm. And even our animals are also getting grass there. Mm -hmm. So those are part of benefits. Yeah. Because when the trees are down all, you cannot even get the grass. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So when we, we, we adopt this practice, then the grass come mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And our animals are now yeah. getting the and grass. And they're thriving, yes. and, and humans are thriving again. I think it's, it's Dr. June who said, listen, we only have one earth, mm -hmm. and we have to learn to coexist all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, the animals, mm -hmm. wild or domestic, and as well as make sure that we conserve the environment, the forest, and also make sure that we also get um, 
bumper harvest really which is good um, you know for our pockets as well economically <laughs> right okay uh, but on a wider scale Emily what would you say you've seen the successes um, through the through the project and um, this is on a wider scale and I'm also interested especially in the Asal areas because again drought in almost more than half of the counties in the country are experiencing drought right so in using this approach especially in the in the asal areas right what's some of the things that you've seen um you can see have been beneficial so it will be also in order to mention that uh, farmer managed natural regeneration is not just a biophysical practice uh, yeah. uh, towards uh, land restoration but mm -hmm. it is also a foundational practice mm -hmm. that supports sustainability mm -hmm. and success of other development that initiatives. Yeah. And you find that in the assets, once the environment is secured, mm -hmm. then you are sure that other development, other initiatives in. will yeah. just sprout. Yeah. Go to those areas with high uh, percentage of tree cover mm -hmm. or forest covers, you'll find that they're thriving even in terms of food. Those are the, mm -hmm. the food baskets uh, for the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, when referring to your question in the assets, mm -hmm. Uh, those are the places that you find that uh, tree survival of exotic tree seedlings uh, is just almost so, zero, yeah. almost zero, because many times if you try it, they fail along the way. Mm -hmm. So in these areas, uh, World Vision is working also on FMNR in Marsabit County, which is okay. one of the Asal area, extreme areas where there is a lot of droughts. Mm -hmm. And these areas, uh, World Vision has done, has implemented FMNR, mm -hmm. and you find that there are so many farmers, especially women in the community mm -hmm. who have been given the chance by the wazis in the community uh, to practice uh, FMNR. Yes. And in those areas, you will find a very big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, women were able to protect certain trees, mm -hmm. and those areas people usually have a lot of conflict on um, natural resources, especially mm -hmm. water, yes. grazing lands. And through FMNR, they've been able even to have grass, mm -hmm. enough grass for their, uh, for their know, livestock. So this has reduced, uh, gra greatly reduced the uh, conflict that communities usually have among them due to a scramble of uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And also you find that um, they are able to sell uh, the excesses uh, of the grass that they produce. Mm -hmm. They are also able to ses sell the, the, the cuttings the prunings from the trees mm -hmm. and these women are now able to take care of their families mm -hmm. you find a very big difference when you go to that yeah. uh, area that uh, fmnr has, has, has been, been practiced. practiced okay and at, at its core mm -hmm. fmnr you find that it's a uh, it's it focuses towards regreening of minds mm -hmm. in regreening of minds uh, i mean we challenge those uh, destructive uh, norms about trees mm -hmm. and uh, an and environment mm -hmm. so that you replace it with an alternative. Yeah. So that people know that it's better to coexist positively mm -hmm. with nature rather than uh, doing it negative. against them, yeah. against nature. Mm -hmm. So this way you find that uh, through community networks, mm -hmm. through the bylaws that they make, they're able to protect whatever they have. Mm -hmm. And this way the entire community is benefiting from mm -hmm. FMNR okay. within their communities. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course we talked about the trickle down effect as well. Um, yes. You know, whereby protecting just this single tree, yes. it all you know goes down to even um, security, for example, because exactly. like you said, most of these communities fight for natural resources. So we need to bring this conversation to a close. How time flies! Um, but I will start with you, um, Emily, in terms of fine understanding how important this is, but also making it a culture. Or making it a habit so that we don't we don't just talk about it today and then someone probably uh, plants uh, you know or grows and then that's it you know end of story making this is a culture what would you say in like uh, 45 seconds okay for us to maintain this practice to even other generations mm -hmm. it is important to not work as a silo okay. it's important that as a community or as a people or as land users mm -hmm. we engage others and awareness creation should continue you find that there are so many people who still don't know about all this story we are talking about. Yes. But when awareness is, is, awareness is done, and also when training is done, their capacity built to the extent to understand mm -hmm. this uh, kind of mix that we are talking about, mm -hmm. then you find that people are able to protect what they have once mm -hmm. they see that there's a benefit, benefit that they're looking the up to. Yeah. And uh, secondly, I would want to say that uh, uh, I'm grateful to World Vision Kenya. Yes. Uh, for this, uh, for the implementation of uh, farmer managed natural regeneration, mm -hmm. and for the uh, through the support of uh, uh, the German Development Corporation through GIZ, mm -hmm. who have supported this project. Okay.
Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily, for that. And William, for, the, for someone who's watching us and thinking, okay, so then how do I make it uh, sustainable, uh, you know, for my family, our communities, and of course, that translating into the country at large? What would you say to, to these farmers again in 45 seconds? Mm, I just want to urge our farmers, our local farmers, mm -hmm. to come out very strongly and practice this mm -hmm. new technology we call FMNR so mm -hmm. that it had to let uh, Mapatu Mengi Kosababu, as we talk now, mm -hmm. we have about 3,500 farmers mm -hmm. and we practice this oh, wow. new technology That's in Migori thing. County. Yeah. And I will urge uh, our partners, Regreening and uh, GIZ and uh, World Vision, mm -hmm. uh, for the support they have been giving us. And I will just request, uh, Migori is a big county and uh, other regions, mm -hmm. let us practice this new technology to other regions so that yeah. we increase 10% tree cover in Absolutely. our county, Kenya. Absolutely. Yes. I like that. Thank you very much, William. And of course, uh, Dr. Mutune, in terms of then, um, you know, the whole aspect of just agroforestry, because like we said, it's not just, you know, trees or crops, there's also animals, um, yeah. you know, in the same. What would you say? Yeah. You know, when we talk about environment mm -hmm. and its sustainability, we cannot go without mentioning very important people like uh, the late mm -hmm. Nobel Peace Laureate, Professor Wangari Madai. Mm -hmm. In her own words, she says, mm -hmm. uh, when we replenish the earth, mm -hmm. we pre replenish ourselves. Okay. So agroforestry is one way. That is the integration of trees, uh, livestock uh, with crops mm -hmm. is, is one way of, of re re replenishing mm -hmm. Uh, the soils, mm -hmm. replenishing the climate because we are sequestering the carbon sinks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also one way of uh, replenishing mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. So let us uh, embrace these mm -hmm. green technologies mm -hmm. like agroforestry, the farmer managed natural regeneration, mm -hmm. so that we are able to uh, secure our health mm -hmm. as human beings. Mm -hmm. Because when we secure the health of the environment, mm -hmm. our health as human beings, mm -hmm. as farmers, food security. Mm -hmm. crop production mm -hmm. is sustained mm -hmm. and uh, it is bumper. I like that. Yeah. All right. And of course, I hope and I believe that all of us have learned a lot, uh, you know, from today's episode and that we will practice and that is the farmer managed natural regeneration approach. All right. Thank you very much to my panel today, Emily Oko, conservation specialist, World Vision Kenya. We also had uh, William Odell, who is a chairman, Community Forest Association in Migori County. And of course, not forgetting Dr. Jane Mutune, who is a scientist at World Agroforestry. Thank you for your time today. We've learned a lot. And of course, thank you for staying with us as well until the end of the show. That is where we say goodbye this Thursday morning. But I know that you've learned a lot from today's conversation. So for everyone who uh, put together and made sure that the show is a success, a very big team behind us who you never get to see, we say thank you. God bless. Have yourselves a lovely day and enjoy the rest of your week. Goodbye.